Hey guys, uh, this is episode four of AAA, Amateur Artist Assembly. Um, today's topic is going to be centered around art and comics and graphic novels and uh, things of that sort. Um, I'm James, and I, I guess I'll let you guys introduce yourselves too. Uh, Justin Clem here. I'm Zach, and we have a special guest with us today. I want him to introduce himself and say a little bit about himself. I don't know why I'm leaning to the mic. Don't have to. <laughs> I'm Randy, and I write comics sometimes, and you know, pretend. <laughs> I'm a very good pretender, which makes for very good comics. Nice, nice. And you need a little bit of that in that uh, profession. <laughs> so me and Clem already know, but James doesn't, and I guess people listening wouldn't either. Uh, just say a little bit about like your education background too. Like I know you have. You're a graduate of the Great Fairmont. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. You mean how I got my armor and how I was knighted from Fairmont. <laughs> uh, so let's see. I've got a bachelor's in marketing from Fairmont, which is... It's good for something if you know what you're doing. <laughs> and... I've prob- I almost have, I'm like five classes away from having a bachelor's in sociology. Oh, and, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. I graduated and I, I could probably have had two more degrees if I really had wasted Dang. another semester. <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to do that. You gotta, you gotta college as quick as you can. Especially Fairmont. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For those you know, who don't know, is that Fairmont State University? Yeah, yeah, Fairmont State University, where uh, located in Fairmont, West Virginia, where every house has character, <laughs> <laughs> and and every none of the characters have houses. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's that's actually true. There are a lot of homeless. That's amazing. <laughs> they should use that as their slogan. Now. That's, yeah, their slogan is actually. Um, See if I can get this right. Come for a day, stay for a lifetime. Oh, which wow. is fairly that... true, because if you go for a day, you've been there for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fairmont's so weird. I've only ever been there like twice. Both times we're visiting Randy here and uh, our other friend Tyler Gar. Same here. And like... <laughs> Never been to Fairmont. When you go yeah, into the... Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you go into the town... It's like, at first, you're in this nice little, like, neighborhood. It's very, like, 1950s, perfect, like, nice cut grass and hedges and stuff. But that only lasts for, like, two minutes. And then, <laughs> then you're into, like, some weird dystopian, like, there are, like, rats bigger than people eating other rats. And you're like, what's going on here? All the buildings look run down. And then you go a little bit further, and you're actually on, the, like, the campus of the school. And it's, it's really nice. Uh... The campus is nice. Yeah, the campus is... It's, like, right in the middle of, like, a bunch of not nice stuff, but the campus itself is just awesome. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, my graphic design teacher is the one that did the logo for Fairmont State University. <laughs> so really? see that, yeah. That's... That's neat, because... Um, and they're actually... They're apparently trying to do a lot of, like, revitalization products or projects for the community. Uh, my class had to design logos for two of them, one of them being the Westside Action Committee... And the other being Foster and Fairmont. My logo for Foster and Fairmont, I just found out, is in the last three. They're going to pick from those Ooh, three. And awesome. I might have a logo down there. Sweet. But, uh, yeah, Fairmont's definitely got, it's got potential, but it's just. You learn a lot in Fairmont. <laughs> <laughs> I, well. It's interesting to me because it's it's got, like, skyline. It's got a skyline. Yeah. Like, it has a skyline. It's actually a city somewhat, but it's. It, like you know, you know it's, you know it's weird. I, I read this very very good definition of what Fairmont is, and someone was like, people are all trying to get out because it's right beside the interstate, but you can't see it from the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's what happened to Fairmont if it got passed by one of the, like, uh, whatever interstate goes by it. I don't remember what that interstate is. No, no, no. And, uh, it just, no one goes there anymore. Like, right? It no very well could be. Own. But, I don't know, it's, Fairmont's interesting because it's the place you should use if you wanted to, like, 
film some kind of rundown. Yeah. 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 It does have a lot of locations I could see being used for stuff like that. Like, even just, like, the bridge that goes into Fairmont, like, the main bridge that everyone knows about. Yeah. Or uh, I've seen. The gateway connector. Yeah. That, yeah. Like that, like someone walking along that bridge with that city in the background would look like some kind of dystopian <laughs> uh, apocalypse type scenario. Yeah, it just it feels so forlorn and it has like a <laughs> has like a ethereal property where nothing really makes sense and it's kind of surreal. I was there one time. I don't even think it had rained or anything, but everything was muddy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that everything was muddy. <laughs> everything was so muddy. <laughs> Just water seeps up from the ground. And yeah, just Fairmont. like Fairmont's it. crying and <laughs> tears well from snow beneath falls the earth. Up. There were puddles. There, there, there were actual puddles, and then there were just these there girls running along the road. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Fairmont is just some kind of amalgamation of something from Stephen King's mind for a future book. It reminds me a little bit of Piedmont. <laughs> like it's not, yeah. it's not as right yeah. as Piedmont or anything, but it's like. It has the same, like, people. Dead town, kind of. Yeah, it feels, it feels like time has passed. Like, time has passed it by. It's, it's, it's reached its, its climax, its, its summit. And, and now then, it's just sitting there waiting to rot away. And also, <laughs> it's weird, too, because, like, Piedmont has, Piedmont used to be super nice and super big. Oh, yeah, it was and, a big industrial city. Uh, like, we have, we have some stars who've come from Piedmont. Like, who is it? Henry Louis Gates? Is that yeah. the real famous yeah. historian? They, they even have, like, the building that he grew up uh-huh. in as a historical place. And, and that's how uh, Fairmont is, too. The best football coach in college football is Nick Saban. That's where he grew up, is Fairmont. I think he, I don't know, I think he, I think Fairmont used to have a football team he coached for it or something. But anyways. They have, they have a football team. Dude, they do team. have, yeah. They're not good. It's, <laughs> It's almost now, like backyard football. If you, they would lose at that. <laughs> but if you if you really wanted to like see something and study people, go to Fairmont's Walmart. Oh, I can imagine. Just like if you, you got a combination of college uh, you can students, learn a lot about oh, uh, people in Walmart. <laughs> it's it's down it's kind of gross actually. Oh, like that's because well because <laughs> I mean you're in there you're like there's college kids, there's. Because the way Fairmont's set up, Whitehall is, like, affluent. You know, th- there's there's people with money mm. in Whitehall. And the FBI Center's only, like, just down the road. I so. always forget that they even have that. In- yeah. I don't that's know why, why that's there, even there. Because it's such an unsuspecting <laughs> place for it to be. <laughs> <laughs> but... Like find like, the FBI. They're not in DC. <laughs> they're not in Baltimore. Where are they? <laughs> but if you're, if you go in there, I can't find them. You're like, you see these just, it, it it's like a crowd of just run down people, and then you see like a couple people where it's like, hey, you might have money. Yeah. <laughs> and you see all these college kids just peppered between, yeah. and you know they're trying to buy beer, and they they can only afford like natty light. <laughs> It's just, it's really it sounds sad. Like, it sounds like a place, I don't know, it sounds like an interesting place to be, that's for sure. Could you imagine some, or, okay, to ramp back into the subject here, uh, could you imagine a comic based on that I town? could. Like, kind of like, uh, there's, I'm thinking of something specific about, it's a comic or a story about a town that was specifically really weird. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Something that would be in the Twilight Zone, I guess. Yeah. Like, that is the Twilight Zone You're of talking West about, Virginia. uh... What is it that I'm thinking Night Vale? Of? Or, that's like a podcast thing, like Welcome to Night Vale, I think. Is it? That's that, not what I'm referring to, okay, but if it's some, in the same realm, it's just I've a never, town I, that's I, like in its own dimension. I think, I don't know, I've never, I've never listened to Night Vale, but I know it's like... I'm going to check like a, it out now because it sounds interesting. It's, it's I, I've heard it's really good. For Is it just like people that talk about like... Or is it like are they specifically talking about a place? I, I think what it is, is it's like a... It's like an imitated radio broadcast from this town of Night Vale. Oh, that's ta- cool. They ta- I think, I'm, like I said, I've never heard of it, but I think the like the logo for it has like, it's kind of purple and you see like a silhouette of a small little town and there's like a radio tower. So I think that's what it is. Oh, that's amazing. And, I gotta find this. And this then so they cool. talk, I, th- I think it's like real creepy, surreal, Twilight zone stuff. Really? Yeah, I think. And they report it, it like it's something that's actually happening in the town. Maybe. maybe. I'm not that, sure. If that's what the, if that is something, I want to find it. If it's not, someone needs to make it. Yeah, welcome to Night Vale. Because that's awesome. If not, that's what we're going to make. <laughs> 
But yeah, think about that. It's like Fairmont is its own little dimension, and it, it, I, like things don't make sense there in that sense. Could you imagine doing a comic or something like that? Like, think about that. That could be a really cool venture. That, I I should try and write that just just from. It I could should, be like a, a see like I don't know like something you put in a newspaper like like stories from Fairmont or you could give it a different name obviously. <laughs> there's but there's be influenced a, by that. There's a semi failed project that I had started working on. Don't call it failed unless oh, Well okay. I mean it's not it could failed. still happen. It's 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 just pushed to the wayside and mm-hmm. I don't know how to how to Continue go it. about continuing it because I don't live in that apartment anymore. Yeah. It's a loose end. Yeah. I need to get I need to get that old apartment back with it with That old apartment did have a lot of characters for sure. It was the weirdest layout of an apartment I'd ever seen. I never seen that does not like have that, a bathroom. It was like a bathroom that had two entryways. It was like in a corridor. It was a bath hall. It yeah, was legitimately it was a bath hall. Like a hallway bathroom. <laughs> but weird as hell. No, it was it was essentially going to be me in like a, in my insanity, pretty much. And a piece of carpet. <laughs> Would just show up and ruin my life every once in a while. A piece of carpet. Yes, yeah. <laughs> because because that's what Fairmont's like. Like it doesn't make sense yeah, why yeah. there why there's you know just this random piece of carpet that's not missing from anywhere in my in my apartment. Like all the carpet is laid and perfectly down, and it's just like this random floating piece of carpet, it's like smacking me in the face and trying to go to work for me and just ruining my life. <laughs> That definitely has like, potential in certain realms. That's because because that's, sure. that's Fairmont, where you're you're in there and you're like everything's going perfectly okay, and then someone's like, "Let me throw in an element of right yeah. ridiculousness." It's, it's not okay. Like, Fairmont's the type of place where like a robber comes and robs your house, but they forget to rob anything and just leave something behind. <laughs> <alive. laughs> That's Fairmont. You should go in and leave like their wallet in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a crack reverse house. Rob, whatever that. Was. There was someone <laughs> perform charity. There, there was a crack house that blew up. <laughs> Just the like, you can even say it, it was. Stuff only happens in movies. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't far. It, it really wasn't far from my apartment. But from all I could understand, no one got hurt. And I've never heard of that happening before. Like, in every instance Someone I've ever the heard. Crack fire yeah. on. Yeah, it's just, just <laughs> a crack. Uh, it's <laughs> chestnuts roasting <laughs> by the crack fire. <laughs> oh man. I mean, to be honest, driving down through your neighborhood, it looked like the majority of those houses were probably crack houses. I'm, so I mean, I just, honestly, I've been <laughs> chances in a few are of one of them is going to explode eventually. <laughs> It shook. It shook my apartment. Oh my god! I was like, I was laying there watching Netflix at like two in the morning, and it just this like earthquake. And I'm like, well, I know it's not an earthquake. What the hell was that? <laughs> and then the next day, they're like, do you hear about that crack house exploding? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Who got oh, hurt? That's amazing. No one. Just no one. Important. Just a random crack house. No one's in it. Just boom. Yeah. <laughs> Fairmont kind of reminds me of like those young adult stories like it's like a setting for a young adult story yeah. where there's like fantasy elements going on in the background that like the adults don't notice or recognize like there's mm-hmm. like fairies in crack houses and they <laughs> kind of like uh, <laughs> they're making explosives on it and <laughs> planning on taking over the town and, yeah, some idiot fairy blows it up on accident I think Fairmont is actually like it have either have any of you guys seen the Maze Runner or read the, Maze, read Runner? the Maze Runner? I haven't seen it or read it, so well, but I can't remember it. So, but you'll like refresh me. Like they drop them into the maze, mm-hmm. right? And and they're Everything supposed to survive. To kill them. Yeah. That well, could be I feel like that's Fairmont. That's for sure. Like you can't figure out how to get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's Everything's that's trying to rude. kill you. You just that that's. It's a really good setting. It's it's a really, really like, good setting. There's like one place in Fairmont that's real safe, but don't go outside the walls. Uh, you know, they, they arm you if you're if you're going out. Yeah. They're like they're like 
It's not safe to go alone. <laughs> has take own, a friend. Has here's own, a beer. <laughs> <laughs> has its own weird di- dialect and like <laughs> slang, like in the Maze Runner. It does seem like the people that are in Fairmont, like when I'm driving, when I when we left Fairmont, we yeah. were like coming in and out. Just seeing the people walking down the streets and like the house parties going on in the middle of the day, it just seems like a totally different type of people live there. They, they, are, <laughs> they are a totally like. like I, I didn't understand. There's gonna so, be there's gonna be people from Fairmont like these guys. I fucking hate these guys. <laughs> but but like, if you're from Fairmont, you don't realize. I can understand that because I like, feel like Kaiser. Kaiser's I the same way. Yeah. I felt that way until I was outside. Of yeah, Kaiser. yeah, that's like, not the normal. Whoa. Yeah, no, no, Kaiser. Wait a minute. Kaiser's not normal either. We have a thing called Ion Kaiser, which is just <laughs> in itself. Why do an it, entertainment is, source? Okay, I realize that there's like Ion New Creek, and is there? Yeah. I think it's just as bad. I think they popped up as, like, copycats. Probably. Yeah, and there's, like, Eye on Burlington, which, what are you going to see yeah, in Burlington? Yeah, the creek's still going good today. <laughs> yeah. There's still going good. Oh, we got the apple harvest this one time of the year. That's some things get crazy, and then nothing happens. <laughs> but, like, is there Eye on anywhere else in the world? Uh, it's hard to tell. Or is it just Mineral County? I like to think that's our own little... I that's I can, think it I think it has to be because that's what Kaiser can be known for. A lot of it's fiction. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it should be. It no, it really is. There's there's, or it has to be because I saw I saw a post about a woman complaining about kids playing at the park playground. Yep. <laughs> She's like, that woman was like, it's nine thirty and there's still kids out. What's going on in this world? Where are the cops? <laughs> Call them five minutes ago. Yeah. Every the nice thing was for once everyone on there made fun of her. Like the whole. <laughs> It was a really, compared to how Iron Kaiser normally is, it was a really nice symbol where the whole community got together and insulted one woman for being a jackass. So, and it's like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Anyways, that's Fairmont and that's Kaiser. They're very similar. The only difference is Fairmont's like, com- like Fair- Fairmont has like humor in it, whereas it has humor in its depressingness, whereas Kaiser is just kind of depressing. Yeah, it's. I feel like that's only because... Uh, we grew up in Kaiser. And yeah. it's depressing to us because we have attachments to that and we see the failure. With when, Fairmont, we're just the outsiders looking at that's it. That's true. Like, oh. So someone might think the same thing about Kaiser. I don't, I don't know. Kaiser doesn't have the same... It's just a different personality, I guess. <laughs> it does. That's what it comes down to. I think when we just know live, too much about it. When it you live in that both, mystery. like Kaiser and Fairmont, you realize... Yeah, that, what like, happened to you? How did that affect you? <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the reason I'm insane. Did you make it out? Like, yeah, right. I told Randy you, I've out. been knighted. Like, I'm yeah, technically Sir Randy Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's just... House Fairmont. Like, oh, you, you see that, that Kaiser is slightly better mm-hmm. than Fairmont because somehow, somehow, Fairmont is full of, like, corruption... Like really, Daredevil could live in Fairmont, <laughs> and 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 he would have just as hard of a time as he does with in Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! So, yeah. <laughs> Fairmont is West Virginia's Gotham City. The little, yeah, that that actually that that part of West Virginia has the highest like unsolved murder. Wow. Like, seriously? Yeah. yeah. Oh Isn't that where... <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> this might be completely wrong. It's just outside Morgantown. Where was... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Never mind. Where is Mothman located? What's that's oh, a little that's, farther down. That's it's like central point, West Virginia. No, it's not Point Pleasant. What am I saying? Uh, Crap, where is that at? I know the name of the town. Um, I'm, is it Point Pleasant? I gotta it find might that be. Out. No, I think it is. West no, Virginia's point good Pleasant for that. West Virginia's is like... Oh, it's got a lot of that kind of like just weird... Yeah. Uh, folklore? Weird Appalachian, like, mystery to it. It's because of the ap- ap- Appalachians. It's because that... I mean, think about the type of people that originally moved here um, were a lot of the people that were shunned, like the Irish and the German. Yeah. American. Like, that's where a lot of the heritage comes from. So, I just assumed that the whole mountain people up there, like, they just kind of leaked into our culture. I like that's to believe... That's why most like this. I like to believe that the mountains are just, like... Uh... Uh, passive miasmic force I, that leaks yeah. like I can see mystery that. and surreality. Point Pleasant, I was right. Point Pleasant. Yeah, there's a bridge that he was seen on in yeah. Point Pleasant. There's a movie 
Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, ben Affleck, I think. <laughs> uh, right, Mothman. Mothman, it's Mothman really Prophecies? Good. Yes. Yeah. Is it Ben Affleck? I Was think that right? so. That's been a long time since I've watched that. Yeah. I don't was, even um, think I saw it. I think I just remember seeing the, the front of it. You know what was cool? Like, it's kind of entirely off topic. But have you have any of you guys seen American Ultra? Huh. No, is that the one with uh, Jesse Eisenberg Jesse and Eisenberg. Kristen Stewart? Yeah. Takes place in West Virginia. What? Entirely. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Why do we get such... <laughs> yeah, I feel like when people don't know where to like put a location for They're the like, story, Let's put this in the just West like Virginia. West Virginia. Freaking nowhere. Because, and, so, yeah, you guys and, remember, this is a, this will kind of, I guess, well, never mind, this won't get us back on topic, but it's, <laughs> at least it's something related to art. Uh, this, this, the, this is pop culture stuff. Anyway, the, so the, the, the Silent yeah, Hill movie, yeah. you guys know? Yeah. So Silent Hill movie came out based on the Silent Hill games. The games are awesome and horrifying and the movies suck. And yeah. are embarrassing compared to the games. I never saw them, I'm kind of But they're, they're good in like a, this is so bad it's good so I can laugh at it type of way. And they're full of gore, so I feel like gore is good too. But, uh, so, and the Silent Hill games, they're not, the lo- it's, there's no location for Silent Hill. I think there might have been hints, so like there's like a Toluca Lake, and then there's Toluca Lake in California and stuff. Uh, but like the rest of the geography around it doesn't match at all, and then there's a lot of like references to being on like an Indian burial ground, which is why it's so spiritual and like f- kind of messed up. But uh, so yeah, that's what they did for the movie. They're like, where do we put Silent Hill? And then right at the beginning of the movie, it pans out to like some mountains and some trees, and it's like Silent Hill, West Virginia. It's like, yep. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> this isn't right. I live in West Virginia, and if Silent Hill was here, I would move. Yeah. <laughs> You're wrong. No, it is funny how like. Uh, West Virginia, as weird of a little state that we are, and how, like, we honestly, like, when you think about it, we don't have a lot of recognition for things. We're irrelevant. We're known oh around the world. Yeah. I mean, hell, that John Denver song yeah. is, like, known Country by every world. person that lives in America. Or you can, you can, world, you can literally planet, go to, like, the middle of China. And then know John and just Denver. And then know Country Road. I feel like our little state so really does a good job of punching up. Like, even our football, like, our, our West Virginia University, our football team, like, we've been historically better than we probably should have ever been. And, like, we have a lot of celebrities that come out of West Virginia that you wouldn't really think of. Steve yeah. Harvey. Steve Harvey, exactly. Wow. Don Knotts, know, like, yeah. I don't know. We're, we're an that interesting female state. female actress that was in a lot of stuff, too. I can't remember her name, but, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a there's few. A lot of crazy. Um, shoot. Like you wouldn't expect. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. It's weird. Same how, we have a bunch of fo- really good football coaches come out of the state. None of mm-hmm. them stay, unfortunately. Uh, Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher, coach for FSU. Um, we have like I don't know. It's just uh, even going back to like our we the people thing, which is, I'm not going to get into this too much in detail, but some like the contest me and Clem did when we were in high school. We placed 37th nationally, and like yeah. we probably should have placed like 45th. <laughs> West Virginia, like we had no right. Yeah, it's 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 weird. Like we we sit at the bottom of a lot of lists for, or at the top of a lot of lists for bad things, and the Obesity bottom of a lot of lists for good things. Depression, yeah. But for some reason, there are some weird. Like it's it's that stuff that makes West Virginia kind of like a a perfect uh, brooding ground or breeding ground for like good things mm-hmm. i don't know it's weird you know, like our our politics is interesting too because we're like a republican state that votes like democrat but we only vote for weird like republican democrats you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like the democrats we vote for are republican pretty much but they're kind of democrat and then at the same way like i don't know we're as far as like conservative peoples go we kind of support the as a as a as a whole, as a state, we support, like, the downtrodden, the poor. People like to help. Like, we have we're probably a pro-welfare state compared to, like, the Midwest. But at the same time, we're, we're very, like, just leave us alone. Like, we don't want any government involved mm-hmm. in our lives. And it's, it's, it's just interesting, even back to our, like, our, our formation, our foundation, where we split off. Or we didn't, yeah, we split off from Virginia so we could stay with the Union. Like, yeah, who would have thought? Yeah, it is weird. It's, <laughs> you wouldn't think that now. Um, but yeah, West Virginia is an odd little place, and it's it's appropriate that it would harbor odd little towns like Fairmont and Kaiser, I guess. <laughs> which, which, being of these kind of places, you really like. You gain a perspective on the world that lets you 
give back. <laughs> give back some of that eccentric craziness that like, you pick up from these places. Yeah. Keeps the world so, entertaining. So, like, when you when you're telling a story and it scares people and, you know, they pee themselves <laughs> and they go, well, how'd you learn to do that? You go, I lived it. Yeah. <laughs> That's really true. I think, uh, like, when I think of, like, so this will kind of get a little back, back on topic too. I'll talk about this and then we'll move back on to comics. But uh, when I think of, like, storytelling, I think of, like, kind of like a, a cowboy sitting around a campfire, like, telling a story is how I see it. And I feel like the people of West Virginia are really good storytellers because of all the experiences we have. I feel like that really oh, yeah. extends into kind of I, like our art. Oh, it does. I hardly agree with that. It's one of the best storytellers I've ever Because, like, even, just... even uneducated, like, mill yeah. workers, they're, yeah. like, they tell really good stories. They're interesting. They're they funny. They your seat. They know how to... It's, it's weird, but that is, like, uh, a, like a uh, just something that people in this area mm-hmm. have. Yeah. My dad has it. Mm-hmm. Dad... Some of his stories may be like blown out of proportion, big time, but like the they always are like amazing. Uh-huh. You're just like, oh, tell that story again. And every time we go to like a a, like a different area, um, everyone's always begging for my dad to tell his stories of his mm-hmm. childhood and stuff like that. And it's just it's it's interesting in that way. But uh, to get back on topic now, um, I mean that's a good segue into it. Storytelling. Uh, since we're such good storytellers, I don't know of many comic. Uh, or com- I don't know many comics I don't know mm-hmm. or comic artists where they're from yeah but it'd be interesting to see like some West Virginia West based Virginia? ones that would be that'd be really cool interesting thing to maybe look into because I'm curious if that since we trying to... claim that that translates into our culture yeah. that maybe if there's some more interesting well, there's... folklore that comes out of this area we should do it Let's be the yeah, first. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a good thing. Yeah, but, we, could be the, we could be the... That actually wouldn't be a bad idea for the state. Mm-hmm. Like, where is our destiny as a people after coal? Because coal's going to die. Like, no matter how much... Like, it doesn't matter how... Yeah. Gov- government regulation or not, eventually there are going to be better forms of energy. And we need to They're start. not quite there yet, even I agree. There, but as, Even if there isn't, you can't... Yeah, it's, it's, sustainable. Yeah. it's not going to last as forever. As a state, we, need, we do need more to base our economy off of so, because tourism is one of them I was gonna say well that's a good point tourism is comes a, here you'd be surprised there's a lot of stuff they like the, they like the pretty floor. leaves they like the, the <laughs> it's because West Virginia's got that Family weird uh, uh, like ecosystem that we can harbor like any kind of like a yeah. lot of plus we're so foreign to like, like people that. people don't even think we like exist yeah so I foreign. mean hell we went in that competition we did the people that we were on the bus with didn't even realize that West Virginia wasn't Western Virginia yeah, uh, yeah. I really it, hate that like I'm surprised that people don't actually realize that there's a lot in of this people day and age it's Jesus. really embarrassing but I was gonna say like that's where we could go as a state, maybe. We could... Just more into tourism. Culture. To, culture, yeah. art, yeah. tourism. You know what I mean? I, I mean, think there's that's... A, I mean, I, I do know we get a lot of tourists already for um the, the big-ass Greenbrier Hotel down mm-hmm. in s- southern West Virginia, owned by Jim Justice. But it's like... It, uh, this rich ass fancy hotel yeah. that I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like really, $10,000. It yeah, it's not very representational like, of it, West Virginia. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we need better things. I agree. I mean, I will say that there is. I mean, I see an attempt for that to be a bigger uh, product of our state, but it doesn't seem like it's getting the recognition it needs because I think, unfortunately, that a lot of the arts uh, festivals that you see in West Virginia are often saw are seen as like folk art, mm-hmm. like and they, people and, like our are. generation isn't very intrigued by that. But I feel like if people just give some of that stuff a chance, yeah. or if they would even would like, be some really good get inspired by it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and there's some really you could cool have, you could have both too. You could have like that's, that'd be such a cool thing. Is what if West Virginia was like the cultural artistic hub of the United States? Oh, I think yeah. that I think Insane. that I think that could I mean, be. No, that's New York right now, I'd say. But yeah, 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 something like that. Big cities are real popular for that. But I feel like I feel like, like uh, some... I think rural settings are so much better for that than oh, big yeah. cities. I, I mean, feel like that the could thing be our that's future. good about big cities is it's the different types. You gotta, you gotta take it this way: it's the different types mm-hmm. of art that you get out of these. In cities, you're gonna get a lot of collab- or collaborative art and just mm-hmm. a lot of diverse lot cultures. Of, yep, exactly, and a lot of more futuristic art as well because it's just the center of technology. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is cities. Um, with places like West Virginia, you can get different types of art though. You get the other side of the spectrum, and that stuff's interesting too. Like, I don't know, it would be neat to see that 
kind of take foothold, but I, I'm skeptical that it would ever happen, which makes me sad. I we spent, just need some leadership. Yeah. I spent two days, like three months ago, at this festival. I don't even know. I, have, I think it was in Franklin, actually. Franklin? Yeah. Uh, which is smaller than Kaiser, and it's very yeah, weird. I'm trying to think what festival that would be. It's the, it was the Treasure Mountain Festival. Yeah. I and there were people from, like, Virginia and clearly West Virginia and, like, somewhere else. Somewhere that was just really kind of threw me off. But there were there were a couple thousand people just culminating for this festival that was yeah. just, like, I saw a guy selling some dip <laughs> and I was selling bathtubs. Was he selling, like, tobacco like, dip or, like, no, cheese no, dip? No, 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 like, cheese okay. dip. I couldn't tell. It's West Virginia. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, so Randy's out there selling baths all the people. I like to see people eat their eat faces. <laughs> I, I want the walking dead to be The true, zombies. So I don't have to deal with this. <laughs> the mountain zombies. <laughs> but no, oh, like, God. that that was, that would have been a really good place to see, like, a culmination of just different cultures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To just... I do think that there's a lot of festivals in West Virginia. There are. There are. That's, that's, oh, there, there are. That's probably where a lot of tourism comes, actually. Yeah. Because there's a lot of festivals that happen just in Morgantown, too, that people come from all over to, all over the place to see. Um, to uh, get back onto the subject again. Which we, we're not going to stay on subject. Yeah, so it's this okay. is going to be yeah. hard. This, no. is, uh, <laughs> this is the this, mountains of West Virginia. I was going to say, this podcast subject, now. I guess, but... Uh, this particular subject makes me think of so many other things that us that the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, comics can they well they go every direction yeah crazy. that's true there, there's there's no one right way to do a comic yeah so it's just like like because you've got Charlie Brown yeah I mean that's know? true it's, it's it, like, it pervades the, all walks of life despite yeah. what the name says the, comics are more than just like humor you got all yeah. sorts of stuff and oh it, comics can go for, range from serious to funny and they can range from mundane to high fantasy yeah like, I guess super, that's one of the things I love super about like comics. mature almost literature yeah it's kind of ironic I think humor is maybe one of the least yeah the least yeah, representative right. yeah. in comics it's like, where that's it. from what I understand that's where they start like yeah. the common day comic that we know uh, mm-hmm. that's where it started it started newspapers yeah. yeah Pulp Fiction yeah that's mm-hmm. exactly what Pulp Fiction was that that and like short stories in newspapers mm-hmm. just being published but it's like with this recent I wonder when I mean it definitely was it started with when superheroes uh, came to popularity oh, that's yeah. when like the individual comics mm-hmm. books themselves yeah. came out um, they're really the groundwork for what we have now which is every type of genre of oh absolutely I, which is I really mean, cool when you think about that that does make me have a lot more respect for that there's theme Talking like, because you were saying before we started that that superheroes are predictable yeah, sometimes, I've been, I've and that that that, that, that can get really that, like yeah. that can be overdone. Mm-hmm. But like, I can't remember what issue of Action Comics it was, but it was like one of the first Superman just comics. Mm-hmm. Which it's weird that I know this because I really can't stand Superman. <laughs> yeah, that's not one of my He here. um, like. He like spanks a prostitute, or something what? like that. Yeah. No, see, I would yeah. read that. Like, see, that's what I'm saying. That like, sounds like, interesting. Yeah. What happened was, he was there. There were like ten issues of Superman, where he was absolutely just a lot different than what he is now. But then people were like, because it was it was like the it was like 1938. Yeah, yeah. You know, people weren't. Well, they weren't. And they they weren't as insensitive or as in, insensitive. They weren't as insensitive. In my yeah, opinion. they they were just they they were like, this is too this is too graphic. So they dialed him back to oh, just okay. I see what you're saying. You know. Yeah, especially that that era would have been really especially when it comes to sex. That would have been very uh, yeah. crude. I guess when I'm thinking sensitive, I'm thinking of our of what it is now. Where yeah. people are just like that's one of the things that I think kills superhero comics for me is they're too. I, I mean, if you look at the comics I've got, I They're like kind dark of stuff. Sterile. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Superhero I don't. Or yeah, they are sterile. Well, like, they don't. They don't they, touch on like actual issues. Like there was something that I uh, actually I was just thinking about this, and then I watched someone talk. Or I was listening to someone talk about it, 
And, uh, like, comics don't don't touch on, like, common day issues or things like that, mm. or, like, themes of what we have today. Like Part of that's the demographic, though. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. I mean... There, there are some. There are, yeah, there are some. That will... Yeah. That will... Like... I just don't feel like those ones you see... Yeah, I guess that's my own fault, too. I mean, I, if I searched for it, I'm sure I'd find it. But I, but but I, I mean, do that's feel like, like searching a, for a needle in a haystack sometimes, yeah, because... I, I do feel so like there's many. just a big... Like, the ones that are popular right now are the ones, with even with our generation, See, are the ones that are not. the ones that are sterile. Yeah. Well, they, I'm kind of... Oh, yeah. I mean, it happened with a, a lot of comics. Um, I, I'm not sure when, but, like, the whole... Uh, when they had to dial back everything, like, they had that, that era when, like, Joker was just, like, pulling pranks on yeah. Batman and Robin Banks. Like the, like the, the our parents' Batman this. movies? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> they they shooting some banana and stuff. These, these kids reading these dirty comics, it's going to melt their brains and make them commit horrible, like, deeds against humanity. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, but no. It is just, oh. Isn't it funny how that every... Every parent, like every parental generation, does that for whatever the popular like, like if it's like us in video TV, games. Yeah, video yeah. games now, TV before, comic books then. That stuff's gonna rot I your mean, brain, it, and then they all turn out. To, then those people who were told that are like telling their kids that TV's gonna rot your brain. Like yeah. it's so ironic. Because I, it is. This, this is what I was looking for when you said it doesn't do, like, dark things kind of. Okay, because Batman, the Killing Joke, like. Jim Gordon has to look at Barbara being like pictures of Barbara just naked and being defiled. Yeah. Okay. See, like, like that's if superheroes were introduced to me in that way, I'd have been like, maybe that's just my sick twisted mind. I think that stuff's <laughs> cool. I think dark. I like dark mm-hmm. themes that are more centered in reality. Kind of why I like Batman, just in general. That's why I love. Even yeah. though he's a god, like, yeah. like yeah. Let, let's just let's let's be real. Batman is actually. He's some they kind of a god. They make it seem like that. That's for sure. Yeah. You can't because he's just a human. Well, I, I think the most interesting thing about Batman is it, I, not the whole superhero aspect, but like the villains of it. it, it just so that's many true, diverse. Yeah. I mean, they have the the new show that's on now, Gotham. Like Batman's not even in it. Like it's <laughs> it's all pre, you know, Bruce Wayne turning into Batman. Uh, but it still has like all the villains and their their rise to power, and it's it's just so so interesting. Like even though you don't see Batman ever in it. Like I, I don't think you even need the superhero for it's actually that universe when you to think be about it. Yeah. Talking the superhero isn't really where a lot of the interesting stuff no, comes it's, from. It's the villains. It's the villains. The villains and, are the and, main content of most uh, of those things. It's, the superhero it's, is just this. The it's mediator. the villains, and it's like there's some instances. The superhero's too. life outside of yeah. being a superhero, because that's what makes Spider-Man. I was gonna say, like Spider-Man is people are people love Spider-Man. He's not that great to be as a superhero. He's really he's got reflexes and like kind of super strength, and he's he's a decent scientist, mm-hmm. you know. But like he's a normal guy. He screws up. He get he gets like like he he's let so many people die that are really close to him that you're just like, well, yeah, that would be me as a superhero because I can't That's save everyone. Yeah. He's a more relatable person. That's- but why I hate Superman so much. Superman's I the most boring thing. In my <laughs> the concept of Superman is the most I, boring thing. The thing that sucks though is if you were to look at some of the lore from like the older Superman comics, is they do go a lot into like Krypton and that kind of thing. Yeah. I was gonna say, I think if you uh, made a, I think if they Superman, in my opinion, just needs like a reboot. He's too he based in like 1950s like. Every kid wants it's to grow. It's a bird. Up and it's be, a plane. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Like it's that such a generic. But it needs. If I think if they just rebooted the series and they presented it as like here is this super badass god thing from another alien planet, then mm-hmm. I think that'd be more like interested to our demographic. Recently, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how long it it took place or if it's still taking place because I don't read Superman comics, but I know for for at least the last like five or six comics. He hasn't had his powers, hmm. and people and people know that he's Superman. Like they know Clark Kent is Superman, so he's just like a normal guy riding around on a motorcycle, getting <laughs> into fights. Like <laughs> now that that actually sounds more appealing. Yeah, yeah, like I think that would be cool to have like a normal guy called Superman, where basically take Batman and call him Superman. Yeah, yeah, because he's 
a normal guy. Mm -hmm. He, you know, can lift like 800 pounds, but that's... That'd be cool, too, to make it to where he, like... Right now, again, I'm, I don't know too much about Superman because I don't read Superman comics, but in general, a big criticism a lot of people have is that you have this guy who has no weakness, and that's not an interesting character. We like a yeah. character for both mm-hmm. their strengths and their weakness. You have this guy, he, he, if his only, the only way to defeat him is with one, like, one kryptonite, so there's not a whole lot of ways to make it an interesting battle. Like, you know that if there's ever going to be any danger to him, it's going to be with, like, kryptonite. Yeah, it's exactly. Little, it's, it's a little he, lame. It, it, it annoys me that he has so much power, and still people, like, kick his ass. Yeah. <laughs> For a long time. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot you of know? sense. When, when If you're going to set up a character like that, you need to make it consistent, or don't set up a character like that. Yeah. Because it just doesn't it make... Was, it's, it's a bad formula. It was really interesting. There, There's an episode of, like, Teen Titans Go, mm-hmm. or something, mm-hmm. where Robin gets Superman's powers, and he takes care of crime all over the world. Like, there, there's no crime yeah. all over the world in, like, a week. And I'm just like... Yeah. That's what would happen. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what happened. Wait, well, how, like, I mean, I don't know anything about Superman. You, how, is, how has it gone on so long? Like, if they find if, like, they, they find ways, like, a big thing is they exploit, like, his personality. Like, he can't, yeah. like, he doesn't want to kill people, so oh, let, like, yeah. the villain get There's, away. And then... Some of his villains, though, I'll are... Let you go this time, Lex <laughs> Luthor. <laughs> yeah. so, some of his villains do pose a threat to him, like, Doomsday can't die. And then you get two characters who so, can't die. Like. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like you know, it's a rock fighting a wall where yeah. you're just like, well, none of neither of us are going to really hurt. But that's kind of cool too. That has, I like that a little bit because that has uh, some symbolism to like modern day war, where we can't fight wars anymore because the only way we fight wars is with nuclear weapons. So like, we have to solve our conflicts in other ways. I think that is a little interesting. We don't though. Yeah, I No, well, I was gonna say that, that like they do that in other comics too, but they they like they they make it more interesting. Like the the Batman Joker thing, like Batman Batman won't kill his enemies, and the Joker won't kill Batman because the Joker like has fun like dicking mm-hmm. around with him, <laughs> and so like you know that's an eternal battle. Like I just they need to find some better way to do it with Superman, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. I think it'd be cool with like, maybe take him to like, in the, you know, the stars, and he goes to different planets and like does stuff there. And on those planets, he finds things that can like match and beat yeah, kill yeah. him. That'd be I cool. That yeah. really I, cool. I think that would be cool just because like if he goes, if he goes to other planets, will will the sun affect him as much? Mm-hmm. So too. will he be as strong on other planets? Like like. John I forgot Carter. That that's where he got his power yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he it's strengthened. Yeah, it's like, strengthened. Like, like John Carter, just... how he like teleports to Mars, and he's just a normal guy on Earth, but on Mars, because gravity is different, he's Superman. Mm. Like, just, that's cooler in, that's in and of itself, just because, yeah. But yeah, as someone mentioned it earlier, I wanted to talk about like how you, you people were more interested in the villain than the hero and it's really true because like every time like a sequel to a, a superhero movie comes out people are always like who's the villain who's the villain that's like yeah, the yeah it'll be interesting with Batman v Superman because they're both heroes oh uh, yeah I, th- I think part of that is that uh villains again like there there are some superheroes who have you know a fair amount of weaknesses but for the most part they're heroes. They're good guys. They fight crime. They they're do good. They're always going to win, too, in these situations. The yeah, for see. the most part, they're always going to overcome the evil. So we like we like that character with, like, internal conflict who isn't perfect, who is bad and has, like, weird personality traits and, like, a past that explains why he is the way he is. Yeah. yeah. I think anti-hero. that's one reason why we like the anti-hero. Yeah. yeah. That's been a, that's been a surging a, theme, yeah. theme, too, with, like, House of Cards and... Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. all of those are following antiheroes, which is just—I mean, it's cool. I mean, people like the antihero. I like. I've always liked the, not so much the antihero, but like, the reluctant hero, where okay. yeah, like the perfect. Well, my perfect example is 
I'm going to go way back now to like 2002. <laughs> <laughs> God, actually pretty I know, yeah, I know. 15 years ago. Like, <laughs> dang. Like, do you guys remember Beyblade at all? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. I don't remember very much of it, but I know. Well, like, Beyblade was, well, God, there's, there's new Beyblade now, so I have to go and explain the characters of Beyblade. Tyson was, like, your, your, like, Superman. He was, he was the really good hero he he was always trying to fight for everything that's good and everything mm -hmm. and he was always winning and then there's like ray and max and they were they were good and they would fight for the good but they they weren't always winning mm -hmm. perfect and then the, and then there was kai kai was better than Tyson, but he didn't win as much because he was he didn't want to like save the world per se. He more of just he more of just fought to be better than Tyson. Okay. So, like, I always like I always I'm always drawn to the reluctant hero where it's just like I don't really want to do this. I can do it. I need to do it, but if if I do this nice choice, yeah, That's like because because heroes are always way too much. Heroes, they're one dimensional. Just run they're, in, yeah. <laughs> which is which is <laughs> funny. It's funny for me to say because I love the Flash so much, and, <laughs> and he does. He he runs in, but at the same time, he's always like like his problem. Because when you read Flash comics, Barry Allen is so distraught because, like, he's trying he's trying to figure out how to go back in time and save his mom. He's he's like every time he can't save someone, it just weighs on him more and more. So it's a lot of his thing is that he can run so fast and that he's, you know, the fastest man alive. But he can't solve all of his problems. He can't still. run away yeah. from his problems. Like, like he can't out he can't outrun himself, basically. That's good. So he's 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 there like he's like I can do almost anything, but I still can't save all the people that I love. Mm -hmm. So like for for me, that gives him, you know, kind of a roundness, kind of a, a human sensation because you know, you're here and you're like you're watching people get hurt around you just in life and you're like well i can't help them I, I would love to help them i'm not rich i don't have superpowers i don't have a fancy suit like i i can't do like my car barely runs what do you want me to do about it <laughs> i like my favorite type of hero is uh i like redemption stories it's kind of like the opposite of an anti-hero an anti-hero like if you're looking at breaking bad that's a character you start off and you, you immediately start rooting for Walter because his life sucks. He got cancer. He doesn't deserve it. He's a smart man. He has a lot Spoiler of... Spoiler alert, just in case. <laughs> it's been out for a while. <laughs> You've had your yeah, chance. If you haven't seen it now... <laughs> Plus, it's not even like, spoilers. I'm describing the damn character. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't sure where you were going with it. But, anyways. Uh, and then, like... So you immediately, you, you root for this guy and you want him to win. And then that's that's the whole draw of the show is over time he becomes a, a basically a bad guy. And then, and then you as an audience member are conflicted. Do you still root for this guy? Like, even though he's basically doing a bunch of bad things now? And the answer is yes, because he's doing cool things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the answer. But I like the opposite of that where you start off with the character and it's the, he's the bad guy. Uh you don't like him if he's most of the time these aren't protagonists but if is it a if it is the protagonist then you only you only follow him because he's leads the story other than that you wish he would be defeated and it sucks every time he advances but then over time he learns and he becomes a better human being one way or the other maybe from an outside guidance another person a mentor and then from there uh they kind of slowly become like a good guy, and they're never the perfect good guy. They always have a touch of their old self, but like it's it's interesting. I like I like that. I like the reverse, like a redemption story. That's Jamie my Lannister. Favorite. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you guys yeah. read or seen uh, Clockwork Orange? Yes. 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 Yeah, that's kind of 
redemption to an extent. Yeah, he kind of like goes back. <laughs> I don't know. That's a that's a good that's a good that's a Kubrick question. take on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah. There's. I, I gotta agree with you there. I do like redemption stories too. I was at first. I was gonna say, I, and I don't know if I do or not. But in that respect, yes, mm-hmm. I do. We'd, uh, none, of, none of you guys are caught up in like the show The Walking Dead, are you? I, like I said, I've seen a season four. Yeah, you, you, you're probably better off, really. <laughs> but like, I feel like they're going with the redemption story for Rick somehow. Mm. I could see where they're definitely doing because, that because like, the last couple episodes that I saw, he was yeah, he kind of losing it. Yeah, man. yeah, and I, I, it's still I want something to happen. Yeah, and that's and just that's draw things out. Yeah, that, that's all. That's all it's going to do. Like there for ratings and views and money. <laughs> I, and... I mean, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, when I this is going to be a spoiler. So if you read the Walking Dead comics, spoiler. And I don't. I don't think the show has any relation to the comics anymore. So it might not spoil that. The last comic I read of the Walking Dead. Rick got his arm cut off by the director or whatever, the the one guy in the weird camp. Uh, he got his arm cut off by that guy. And then I can remember, there's a lot more since then but uh, that I haven't read. And someone asked the the writer, like, all right, this, they've already are in a world where it's kind of hard to keep living. How's Rick going to keep living in this world without an arm? And I think the, the writer of the series basically said, well, Probably not gonna live forever. So I wonder. I don't know. Does anybody know if Rick's still alive in the Walking Dead comics? I think so. I think he is. Cause, cause I feel like, I, I there, there are things that don't get kept a, a secret. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah, there are, there are spoilers online for everything, and that annoys the hell out of me. But like, that's one of those things. Like, cause when Glenn died in the comics. That was everywhere. Yeah. That that His was like head bashed into the baseball yeah. bat. So I feel like if if Rick died in the comics, yeah, everyone would that know would about be it. Like, yeah. Because <sighs> yeah. I mean, he is the main character of that series. Well, that's what I was wondering. I, w- I wonder how you as transition a, as a writer. Yeah, I wonder how you deal with your protagonist dying halfway through the story, and if are they still the protagonist? That would be a really interesting thing to do, and I'd love to see someone do it where the protagonist is the narrator, who is also like the person that's kind of leading the story and saying, like, this is my journey. Mm-hmm. And then if someone could take that switch main characters, I feel like that would be interesting. I don't know if it would do well. I don't know if it would work well, but it would definitely uh, be a It would be a, a feat. twist. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, and see, it's weird. I feel like by definition... Your protagonist can't like die end before yeah. the story's over. When your protagonist is like done his Why story, that's you when challenge the story. That, well, then I think that's that's the thing that I, I don't know. It's it's a really interesting concept because then I think uh, at that point maybe the protagonist becomes not a character but the world itself. Yeah, it's, you know what's like interesting that. about that too is it almost follows the same uh, idea that our lives do is that like. Once the main character dies, that's the end yeah, of your story. And like when we die, that's the end of our story. And nothing happens exactly. afterwards. That's kind of how books are built. Uh-huh. They're built as a as the human life. And I think there's a reason for that because I think if you so imagine killed your protagonist and brought in a new one, I think that wouldn't feel right as a story. But I'm sure someone could do it really well. Maybe. Oh, like so. it's gotta happen. I'm now sure it's out there somewhere. It, yeah, uh, it's but I it's feel a really like I've seen something. Yeah, yeah that me does too. This. I can't think of it though. Maybe that's what. Uh, didn't Death Note Martin, try to do that? Death Note did that with mm-hmm. one of the characters. Ish. He it did it yeah. with like the vi- like he's not the villain, but in the, the series yeah, of Death yeah, Note, yeah, the yeah. villain, it's the antagonist of the the antagonist. Yeah, they did do that, but I don't. And think then it, it sucked after. They, it did suck because <laughs> they tried to bring. They, well, here's that's the problem. What happened. That's what people will say. Yeah, yeah. They tried to bring someone in that was similar to him. Yeah, if they don't try to make someone like make it completely different. Make it someone different. It's like um, you can't. Like, that's exactly. So they bas- they basically cloned the character they yeah, killed like, off, and then made, have, they they made the, the then made the clone even like a better a better version, but like yeah, a less which interesting. Didn't make any sense. Didn't. It's and made they, them smarter, and that made it annoying. I think what they did. I think the reason for that is because you can't continue your story after you kill off a character like that. Like it's killing off a character like that ends the story, uh, and it reminds me of in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I'm Not gonna I'm good. gonna spoil this because this is like 40 years old, uh, <laughs> and Dragon Ball Z. When 
at the at this end of the Cell series, you can kind of see it that's leading up, and they're trying to make Gohan, Goku's son, the strongest character, <laughs> and then Goku dies at the end of that series, and they wanted Goku to be dead forever, and for Gohan to then become the protagonist, while well, everyone in Japan did not like that because they liked Goku too much, so then they brought Goku back, and it's just, it's weird how, like, that happens. Did, did you ever hear the... I don't know if it was a theory or if it's, like, actually confirmed, but when they brought Dragon Ball Z back for, you know, the the World Tournament Saga and, and the Boo Saga and mm-hmm. all that, they wanted Goten to be the main character uh. and, like, not Goku. That's why, you know, Goten's there. He's, you know, he can go Super Saiyan like it's Instantly, nothing. Yeah. He's just, he's, you know, supposed yeah, the, to be strong. Th- the writer of the series definitely wanted that. Like I said, at first, I know he wanted it with Gohan, and then during that series, they kind of, well... They kind of went back to wanting it to be Gohan yeah. for a while, and then, you know, Goku was just like, well, I guess I can, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll take care of this. Which is, which is, you know, that just goes back to the thing where it's predictable, because... Yeah. That's my least favorite part about Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z is entire, it's, you know exactly what's going yeah. to happen before it happens, and it's still somehow wonderful. Yeah. Like... <laughs> There's not a lot of things that I can say where it's like, I've seen this happen over and over. Yeah, that's the case I, where they play to it. Like, yeah. They use it to their advantage. Yeah. Because, I, I mean... if you do that, then it's I, proper. Anything done like that can be can be made desirable. Like, they change forms? I the think... Villains? <laughs> that's, that's my least favorite part about Dragon Ball Z, is you have all these... It makes Again, it makes sense for villains. You have the next villain is stronger than the last. That's fine. That's whatever. That's a... That's a trope in every anime and a lot of like that's, superhero things. It's that's well, I mean frequent. If you, everything. If you don't do, if you weren't to empower a villain over another villain, yeah, it'd be it less would just, interesting. Yeah, that's you know that's like Batman continuously fighting mobster A. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he, okay. Oh, this guy. It's like, it's like it's like okay, he broke his back again. The guy's the guy's living, but Batman just left him in a pool of his own blood. Uh, that would be a, that'd be a funny story, actually. Is you have yeah. one where your character, your main character, gets stronger and stronger and stronger, but he's fighting the same villains so every fight. Every fight, he's just beating the shit out of this guy like more and more. Well, the that's, next time. I think that's what made One Punch Man so so like different. <laughs> that's a good point. Because because his whole thing is that he's trained for like I don't know how long, but it, his his training was like he ran twelve kilometers every day <laughs> and he did like a hundred squats and a hundred pushups <laughs> like that was his training and then like he just got his body just got so strong that he can punch anyone once and they die <laughs> <laughs> like they're defeated yeah. so like so I guess if he continues to train he just keeps getting stronger and stronger and everyone around him is just not the same like it'll always be one punch <laughs> just always that's a but back to Dragon Ball Z that's like they always have Goku, like, as the... They have all of these good guys, but the only... Like, you know that Goku's going to be the one that kills him in the end. It's still, like, why can't Vegeta do it for once? And then, like, sometimes they'll be like, all right, Vegeta's stronger than Goku now, but it never lasts. Like, <laughs> you know eventually Goku is going to be the think, one. I think that's kind of sometimes what makes Dragon Ball Z so enchanting. That you watch it just to see if somebody else yeah. can, like, show up. <laughs> Cause there, cause there's like, like it happens. It happened in Cell Saga and Boo Saga. Tien shows up. Mm-hmm. He like blasts the shit out of him, and it doesn't do anything. Yeah. But he's just he's still there every he, time. He's still there. Like, well, I'm not backing down. And and while you're watching this, you're going, you know what? Right now, he is better than all of the rest of you <laughs> because he showed up. Even though the guy he's fighting is six times as strong as he is. And he'll probably die right now. <laughs> and they can't wish him back because he's already been wished back once or twice. Yeah, Tien and Yamcha are like the counterexample of that. They're like they're like the, the good guys who show up, but every time they're just exactly like as powerful as they were before, but the villain's <laughs> stronger, so... <laughs> They fight so hard. Well, Tien fights so hard. Yamcha just yeah. gets smacked. Like, like you, it, it, it baffles me that like characters are written. Yamcha, for example, 
where like he's there. He had major he had major roles in the in the entire story, mm-hmm. like from the beginning. Dragon Ball, yeah. Yeah. But like you get to the point where all the villains are strong and it's just kinda like if they poke him, he dies. Yeah. <laughs> like like they, they you know, they walk up behind him, tap him on the shoulder, and you just see his body fall. <laughs> <laughs> They did a good job with that with Piccolo. He always remains kind of relevant. Barely. I don't know. I don't know how Piccolo. Break. Yep. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be right back for the second half. Yep. More comic books. guys we're back with part two of uh episode four of our podcast concerning art and comics and graphic novels um so i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys pick up <laughs> I, 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 what were we talking we're gonna talk about i think we're gonna start with graphic novels okay we haven't touched on them as much lately lately yet um as much as i really want to start reading graphic novels i don't own any <laughs> At the moment, but I was excited to find out that you know, our local comic store has just started making a section for them now, uh, and I myself really am excited to start reading more of them because it's a lot, it's a lot more art than it is words, I guess, <laughs> mm. in a sense. And uh, I don't know that I just really love illustrations, so I really really like graphic novels because they're a little longer than a comic. They can say mm. like that desire yeah. for I art feel like, a little more. I feel like both in terms of length and. Uh how the content is and how it's presented like comic books would be TV shows because they're very periodical and they're mm-hmm. like the same thing and then graphic novels would be movies they're usually like it's kind of some of them are standalone they're lengthier yeah that's content's a good that's, usually a bit more like I guess I don't know the way it's presented is just that's how it seems to me that's a good that's a good uh, comparison actually never thought of it like that but that's a good point that might be why I really like them because I'm not much of a TV show person I'm more like movies mm-hmm. Um, so I like taking like a big chunk of that content in one sitting or across a little bit of time rather than over months. Mm-hmm. Like, cause it's my attention span. 
specifically for me, I have a hard time sticking with one thing for too long. Like, I can lose attention to things that take too long. So, yeah, I really like graphic novels for that reason. I lose... I lose... Comics lose me sometimes just in the fact that I have to continuously buy them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like... And you have to search for them yeah. Yeah, a lot of the times, too. Like, you, they're not, like, just... It's not... You can't go to your comic it's, store and be like, I want this one. Well... It's gonna be like, you're gonna be looking for partially it. Partially because of our lazy culture with 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 I mean, I, digital with digitalization of everything you don't have to look for it as much but it doesn't feel as good to read something on a computer or a tablet mm -hmm. yeah so i go out to like a bookstore and they're like well we don't we we sell these five comics and i go i i wanted you know we are robin number six please and they're like we sell these five comics <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. i'm like can you order it and they go it'll cost you like seven bucks and i'm yeah, like see, and that's that's the i can't i can't justify spending seven dollars mm -hmm. on one comic book graphic novels, but graphic novels yeah respect. yeah I, 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 go ahead no you go ahead I, um well, I feel like people, a lot more people would be inclined to read comics if they just had the access to... More accessible. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. Like, the thing with short comics is, I mean, I guess this can be both a good and a bad thing. This, uh, how short they are, it kind of leaves you wanting more mm -hmm. after you read them. Yeah. But, you know, also, that means you have to go out and get more. <laughs> yeah, but and the thing is, I do think that's a good thing for some comics, but I've seen comics where it's not, they don't leave it on cliffhangers, it just leaves you like... Damn it! Why did it end here? I yeah. really wanted to figure. I wanted to complete this arc. Yeah. And I'm just like, ah, okay, now I'm just left. I have to wait either for the comic to come out or I have to. Well, then try and find the other one, which is never going to happen. So I'm you, just stop reading it. You also have like the opposite effect with like manga, where it leaves you with a cliffhanger. But for instance, Naruto, which ended last year. Naruto had been going on for 15 years, mm -hmm. and there were there were complete arcs where nothing happened. Like yeah, yeah. you would you would continuously go out and say because in Japan they it's like Shonen something, Shonen Jump or something. Well, like Shonen Jump was the American version of it. Yeah, but like you know you go out and you get that every week or every month, and you're continuously reading, you know. A screaming ninja <laughs> who yeah. who is wearing orange and doing nothing for you know issues on end. Whereas like a graphic novel, you're like there yeah, it is. Yeah, you have your story. That story is wrapped up in that nice yeah. little package. Or if, and if it's mean. not, if it's if it's left on a clip, if it's left to like another graphic novel, you know, yeah, volume two or gonna, something, you're not going You know that you're getting more story. Yeah, you're not gonna get to the point where you're just gonna be getting filler comics. Exactly, and which is something that Japan's very bad about. Filler everything in media now is yeah. just. Can I can I just get a story? Like like yeah. don't don't I don't need I don't it's, need it well, drug out. Filler filler's only there for in my opinion, or what I think at least is for two reasons. One, because you need more time to create the content. Yeah. Two, because this to get money and funding yeah. for the next part of it. Yeah, project, if like which, and because consumers allow it. Yeah. Consumers are gonna buy like you know, the Nar like Naruto's good example, that's the Naruto brand, like even if yeah, even yeah. if he's not doing anything, people are still who are interested in that story are still gonna buy it because they like it so much, so like, why not? Yeah, like I, I can understand filler on TV if you're translating a a comic or a manga to TV. Mm -hmm. So you know, if if where you are in in the comic or manga is like being caught up really quickly <laughs> with the TV show, and yeah. they put filler on TV while you're you know building the story over here in the comic. Okay. I can understand fair. that. But when... when I, I've read stuff where, like, the actual... Like, what I'm reading feels like filler. Yeah. And I'm like... I haven't had that happen yet. And I hope I never do. I hope you never do as well, because it's painful. <laughs> like, that would be so frustrating. Like, you wait so much time for something. And, but see, like, in, in that... What feels like... What feels like filler... You get... You get a little bit of necessary things but there's so much filler around it that you don't see it as as clearly and yeah. then 
you have to go back months or years later when it's relevant to the story and you're just you're like when the hell did that you know a good example of that in tv and in uh american television tv shows is uh walking dead in one of the seasons it was so much flashback it was just painful and they would use the same flashbacks but they would like fill out pieces of it at a time so like you see the first scene of the flashback and it'd be just like a little quick scene of someone dying or something happening and then I'd do that again and show that scene and then I'd like show like what led up to it and like all this stuff and just, that's 22 because that's an example of a, a show that doesn't need filler content no. it has so much like source material yeah, ahead of it's like well they had a whole episode that was just talking about how Michonne like had a family before this and all this other stuff like how her life was like before the and it's like, yeah, that's not really... We don't really care about that. We don't yeah. care about the world before like, The Walking Dead. Yeah, that's what we live in now. No one really cares what happened then. It's what that world that we're in now that we want to focus on. Also, this is true for no matter what medium, no matter what platform you're telling your story, it's a lot more interesting to learn about like exposition or character backstory sprinkled and over time. Like You piece together these things. Like, yeah, don't devote yeah. a whole part... Like, if you're doing a series, it, don't behold... It's called stuff. Info Dump. It's where you just, like, in, like, a book, you take a whole chapter to explain, like, your world, why it exists, who this character is, what he's doing. Like, it's not it's not particularly interesting, and it's much more... It's much more fun, like, if you have a character and, like, you don't know anything about him, and then they'll make, like, passing hints and dialogue, and then you're like, oh, he used to have a brother? What happened? And then, like, they'll say something, and then a character dies, and then they'll make a, a comparison to their brother and then you're like oh their brother died that same way and then there's like emotional attachment there yeah and like a connection and revelation and stuff it's a similar way to how people interact you're not gonna just go straight up and tell someone yeah everything that happened to you when you were and there's child. not gonna be there's not gonna be like 20 convenient times you're knocked out for convenient flashback yeah yeah exactly. I'm, having, I'm actually having a little bit of trouble with that in my book is uh <laughs> my main character keeps getting knocked out too much. <laughs> so, or it actually hasn't happened yet, but I had planned for him to like get knocked out more. <laughs> I was like, no, I can't do any more of that. It's not really. I'm glad like, that you're noticing that and like correct, like making <laughs> taking steps to not do that. Plus, my character is supposed to be like this, this like stalwart, immovable badass, and he keeps getting knocked out. Like, <laughs> it's not very consistent. So your character is going to be my problem with Superman. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be awesome, but he gets knocked out every episode. No, like what what you were saying about like not walking up to people and telling them, you know, Your life every, story. Yeah, like when people do that, because that does happen. Yeah, they're automatically un- uninteresting because there's no mystery. Yeah, job. yeah, people like the mystery aspect. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do you wanna? You wanna? Do you wanna have the like? You wanna have the pleasure of like getting to know a person. Over a yeah. period of time, rather like, than all at once, and it's it it's kind of like uh, it makes you feel good about yourself because you kind of like gain trust yeah. and all this other stuff, good, and you kind of well, been able to relate with this person. It's fun as an audience member too, because then you get to a good story is like a puzzle. It's fun to solve. So yeah, like exactly. that's what we enjoy. There's a reason why mystery and thriller have been like popular forever. Like Sherlock Holmes was like the most popular of its People time. People still read it. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. like, like, it's, it's right there. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you think, like, when I, my mom, my mom loves, like, the books she loves are all, like, mystery and thrillers. Same with my grandma. She really That's likes like, those, a, like, mystery dr- detective thriller the, dramas. The, like, the bulk majority of, like, readers who are going after story, uh, they're not interested in, like, Shakespeare or Jane Austen or Hemingway they want like you know they want something that appeals to their baser sense and usually for like an adult that's like mystery mm-hmm. that's why I never understood why we never why like in high school and college you don't read very much mystery that is weird you don't you read like, a lot more like like you read To Kill Mockingbird it's, yeah the classics Cold Sassy Tree which <laughs> oh, I still haven't even don't give me started on like, Cold Sassy like, Tree I don't even Jesus know Christ. I don't even under, all I, I remember guess. is that it's a purple book and that the kid was on a train track for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I, it. I don't even remember. That what didn't stick with me. I no, exactly. That doesn't stick with me at all. That was the town. The town was. was uh, it was not cold sassy tree, but it was cold sassy. I think something it was just like sassy that. tree or something. Sassy tree. That, but like that doesn't stick with me. It it like. Yeah, that book. I read that book, and it didn't. I know a lot of people didn't, but I actually read it. And it like. I, all I remember is the grandpa was a pedophile. Yeah. He was dating some real young girl, and yeah. the family didn't like it. His wife had just died, and. 
I don't know. I'm sure it was. It was. They, they like books like that because it's like coming of age stories, and it's supposed to relate. Yeah, it's supposed what, to relate. That's to the, the majority of. I mean, that's, that's like throwing. Oh, it's like throwing kids into reading Twilight in the middle. Of <laughs> oh God! It's just, I, like, I don't mean, get me started on nothing. On no offense to those who like Twilight, but garbage. that's that's not the greatest of stories ever told. <laughs> Could be better. Like, just I would rather, I uh, if 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 in English, the teacher would have would have been like, here's um. Actually, I had this happen. When I was in college, I had a I had a lit class and he we had to buy a, you know, anthology, which was normal and everything. It was a bunch of short stories. And then we had to buy V for Vendetta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "I want you guys to read V for Vendetta twice." Mm-hmm. He was like, "I swear if you you're not going to pass the test if you watch the movie." And he was right, and I read it twice. I I've read it probably five times now, and every time I read it, I'm like, "This gets a little better, and it gets a little darker, and I learn something just about society in general because it's a perfect representation of what goes wrong." Hmm. I've never read *Your Friend*. That I I recommend it. <laughs> like I highly recommend it. It's. Hmm. I feel like that'd be really good for in high school to get people interested in reading probably even before high school you need to do it in elementary and middle school you need to get people that's how that's how I started on reading like Harry Potter like you know let's you get introduced to stuff like that even before Harry Potter if you're like six seven or eight Captain Underpants like you gotta get like fun stories and people will want to start to read it's like with uh, when we were picking out uh, the book for Daisy's cousin or Nephew. nephew but it's uh at the same time, once you get to high school, I do think it's important that you make it necessary like for some challenging book. Yeah, challenging. Yeah, and I you agree need, with that. You need yeah. challenging. You need the classics. You need I mean, good literature with good uh, that have stood the test well, then, of time. But you need you need both. Like that. Well, that's why I never understood why in high school nobody they don't assign you to read something like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, that's a good example of. The classic that we is. We read Sherlock Holmes yeah. in one of my high school classes, and I loved it. Well, you it. had the right something. teacher then. Uh, I, I, I had, it was, Miss, was it Miss Altabella that we read Sherlock in? I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, we read Sherlock in eighth grade. That might be what you're thinking of, Miss yeah. Sprouse yeah. or something. It was Miss yeah, Sprouse. Yeah. I could see that working. But, like, if you. Because if you read something like Sherlock Holmes, or if you read. Um, we read the Jungle Book. Was fun. Why not the Jungle Book? Yes, that was, no one I had the Jungle Book. I'm That's what I'm saying. That. It's, it's, um, the Jungle Book is very good. Peter Pan's really good. Yeah, those outside like, of the context of like the Disney movies, like I, no. Yeah, I like well, the Disney, Disney movies are good too, but I'm saying like but if you read outside the books, of the context, they're of those, way those are really cool. Mm-hmm. Like they're honestly the reason that I'm so into like the dark kind of Victorian uh, style stuff that I am now is because of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Back in middle school, when we would read that, like the Cask of Amontillado and mm. the Red Mask, Red Mask, the one with the rooms. What was that one called? Uh, the Mask of the Red Death. Mask of the Red Death. Poe, but yeah, <laughs> that, no, yeah, yeah, that is Poe. That is Poe. I don't know what I'm. <laughs> Poe too. Poe too. Because that was oh, something I yeah. read. Yeah. Actually, I started reading Poe in fifth grade because I had a teacher, Mrs. Green. She was looking back now. She was most definitely always high. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, but, to deal uh, with. To I was gonna say to deal, yeah, kids, to deal with fifth graders. Yeah, but uh, anyway, you're gonna be happy all day. Is she you're... had us reading Poe yeah. when we were in fifth grade. I remember mm. I had the most like amazing imagination when I was in fifth grade. It was, I, I was writing stories. I've my uh, mom actually just found a bunch of my old stories that I wrote mm. when I was little, and they're actually pretty interesting to read. <laughs> they're like these ridiculous imaginations of a f- fifth grader. I have this. But, I, I I've always had this. Oh man! Like, I would I would read something, and. My imagination would go off into another, just another realm, mm-hmm. and I would have to like act it out, like in all seriousness. My my dining room has been the scene of like thousands of battles. Yeah. <laughs> just like in all seriousness, like my body goes flying through the through the dining room, and I'm writing stories as I'm doing this, and I'm just like, and this character would be you know, a big brute and he wouldn't say anything. And then for like, for like five minutes, I don't say a word, but I'm like, 
just kind of stomping through my dining room. <laughs> and that's that's all from like method writing. Serious, yeah. it's pretty much that's, is. Yeah, you're right. But it's it's like that all came from this just like ridiculous stuff that I would read as a kid, which was like like I read second grade I was reading Jigsaw Jones. Which was Jigsaw, Jigsaw Jones. Jones was pretty cool. <laughs> and then like third grade was was uh uh the Magic Tree House. Oh my god, I remember the Magic Tree House. I yeah. read all of those. And then like I, I started I started getting into I like, think it's still going on. Is it? It is it is still going what? on. Yeah. How many are they at now? Like, I, like I think 82. when we were yeah. I think we were in like fifth grade or something like that, they were at like twelve. Yeah. yeah. I'd read, I'd like, read it's, twelve. Like, it's it's pretty. It's pretty wow. far. Like, it, it's pretty far. But I like I, I got into you know the deeper stuff eventually. But it's just and all I, it took I, was imagining you, you know, know spinning in a treehouse. Before and then, before we leave this subject, I want to mention something too. It's people like us that need to start writing books for kids too. Yeah. Like, yeah no, absolutely. People with this kind of mindset is what we need for the younger generation the, now because I feel like. We're going to be missing that soon. Do you? Like I feel like the kids all growing up now aren't going to be getting that. They're going to be getting things like Minecraft. Do you see these Minecraft kids? is good for creativity and all that, but not in the way that it's being delivered. It doesn't It doesn't teach you to verbalize I've just seen a lot of brass, things. Yeah. A lot of have you seen, people that are very stuck in Have you seen these just... like two-year-olds that have tablets? Yeah. Mm. Well, like, that's the thing, too. Everyone's attention span is going to be so short. No one's yeah. going to read books It's in yeah. 10 years. Well, my problem has always been the... I mean... Would it not be better? Does it I stifle creativity? Like when when I'm assigned a book to read, when someone's telling me here read you won't this, read it. I won't Let read it. Pick a book. Well, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Let should... them go into you know it's whatever like class here. Like select that. a that's book what, um, oh, that, that you think is interesting. You know, based on your imagination yeah. or whatever. Uh, read that. Do do a book report. Not whatever. Not the same person. Yeah. Don't don't not assign the same inspiration. People like different genres. Because you yeah. don't yeah. Yeah. us read. Don't, don't assign like you know a, a streetcar named Desire to go read for everyone the whole class and then you know do not a get, report on. No, it. It, people no. don't get anything from it. Cause, yeah, because what made us read was Pizza Hut. Yeah, yeah, I was about to mention like, that. Like, accelerated reader points. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. I forgot about that. But, uh... Man, I was, we did live in a great generation, guys. Are you serious? I was gonna, we're kids. <laughs> we're kids. I was going to touch on that. Is, uh... Like... Or if, if teachers do assign books, because they do have to adhere to a plan. And kids... Yeah. yeah. Kids sometimes... But, like, pick books... Give like, like a for the first half of the semester, pick selection. books that you know kid like the majority of kids are gonna like, and do enough books that it'll like every kid will find at least one or yeah. two they like. Then when you assign a book as a teacher, that kid's gonna trust you more. Like, oh, this teacher, everything I read from this guy is read. so. Yeah. Then you'll then you'll give Great Gatsby a, a good chance. And that you goes I mean? all the yeah. way back to having good teachers, unfortunately, because yeah. we get, we need teachers that we need Tyler Carr. Yeah, we need teachers <laughs> yeah. that care about the students, not just their paycheck. Yeah, there's so many teachers now that that's yeah. all that it's. I mean, I, I it's about half and half because it, it gets as little as they make. I, yeah. I can I can understand that it gets hard as a teacher because you also like, get cynical too. Because yeah. yeah. you're like, yeah, well, these parents are coming and yelling at me. Why would yeah. I want to? You like, know, kids it, suck too. It's, kids yeah. do kids suck. Kids system, getting, damn it. <laughs> kids, kids are not good. <laughs> I feel like that needs. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like as a culture, we don't value education enough. Anymore. We don't. I really don't. I mean, if you look at our education system, you, we don't. Part of that is you we have. We also like, don't feed our kids very well. So yeah, pizza's a vegetable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's but, oregano. There's a plant. Tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like you have on the conservative side, you have people who don't want government involved in anything, so therefore no funding for school, and then. On the liberal side, it's like the way the school is structured is not good for creative development, I don't think. So, I think politically and as people, we just don't value education enough. We need parents need to encourage their kids to read. Parents need, parents need like, I mean, that sounds so hypocritical because I, I didn't do anything in school. I did, I did well in high school because. Like, but I'm who better, who better to understand that there's a problem? Yeah, not, that's true. You know, so, like, 
Well, the thing is, we've been doing things the same way in the schooling system since, like, you know, the 60s and 70s. Like, nothing's yeah, changed. I mean, uh, we. I remember coming home, like, with stupid homework assignments. And my parents, well, I had to go through the same thing. When I, yeah. you know, yeah, oh, yeah, it needs to not, change. We don't live in the like, same like, world. Like, if you present everything in a certain way, people are going to like it. I didn't realize this about math until college, and I started taking Calculus 1 and 2. And you realize math is simply like logic, and it's it's a puzzle. Puzzles are fun. Everyone likes yeah. puzzles. If you present math in that way, kids are going to like it more than like... I can remember... I got to algebra a little bit before the other kids in my class, but I can remember in, then in high school when they got to algebra, they were like, I don't understand like well, how are... It sounds stupid, but at, at the time for your developing brain, it makes sense. Like, how are numbers letters? Like, it, no one really stops to explain it. And you know what they did to try and teach it to you? Repetition. Yeah. Repetition, Repetition doesn't Repetition work. was the... Th- the like, uh, solve all for school systems. I don't know why. If I don't you, know why homework is considered. Good you can sit and look at a word six thousand times, but if you if no one ever tells you what it means, you yeah, know, you're yeah, just gonna you, know the word. You're not gonna know the meaning. Yeah. It's the same with like, math. You know, I still don't know what that means. Like mm-hmm. I, I get it. I understand the concept of that, but what's the actual <laughs> definition of it? You know that. Yeah, it's like it's like because there is no definition. It, it of is that. its own it's, definition. It's, yeah. It's that. But yeah. I mean, you can apply that to math. Like we learn the process. We learn the yeah. process of doing something. A repetition. That's why people are really good at some things in math and really terrible at just understanding. Like mm-hmm. you can give someone that knows how to do uh, like multiplication, and they'll do any multiplication problem you put in front of them. Anytime you try to incorporate multiplication in a different way, or to like use different objects, or use like you said letters, it. It, it confuses the whole of them because yeah. they don't understand what is they don't understand the actual concept they understand the process that you have to do a million times it's just memorization which is not good it's, it's, it's not facts. it's not yeah. it's not uh, it's not that's actually how uh, that's it's funny we're not as bad on the spectrum as a lot of Asian countries like uh, yeah, that's Korea is a really big example um, they go to school for eight hours a day and then they go to after school programs for six and then they study for two and then they sleep and that is a korean student's life every That's korean 16 student 16 hours a day they they study Damn. for 16 they, school is 16 <laughs> i'd be like school I'd is 16 myself. sleep there <laughs> there's a reason that <laughs> korea has one of the highest suicide rates in the world yeah uh, I'll show you a video that I watched that was really empowering. It's actually that. It's exactly that. We'll watch it after the show. It's real good. But uh, that's what we it is. And then the description. all that matters is... Because we uh, can do that now. Can. We're on YouTube. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. All that matters to the parents is that their kids are getting educated. But the way they're educating isn't... And it's weird, too, because despite they're doing twice as many hours as like American kids, the result isn't any better. They're not twice as better well, educated. Yeah. That's because... That's because you only you have a certain like amount of time where you can actually learn, and then it's yeah. just yeah. yeah your brain shuts off. You can't you, you we don't like if we absorbed everything that we learned all the time, we'd all be geniuses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. It, like if you look around the room and actually figured out the stuff that you're le- that you're learning when you're not paying attention, your whole your everything would be a little different. Yeah, and everyone that's, would be the same. The whole, everyone would learn at the same rate yeah, as well. That, but that's the whole concept of, like, Limitless. If you ever saw the movie or yeah. the TV show, that's that's the concept. There's a TV stuff, show? Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> oh, it's <wow>. actually <laughs> really good. But, like, that that's the whole concept. He, he remembers stuff that he learned when he wasn't paying attention, mm-hmm. that he didn't know that he knew. Mm-hmm. And then he's a genius. But if, like, if we did that, no one would be stupid. <laughs> which you know that sounds the thing great is, you can't like I even hesitate to call people stupid nowadays I do too because I, cause, there's there's I know that's not what you intended yeah, but maybe no, think of something uh, um, everyone has intelligence on a certain level mm-hmm. with certain things and there's this is really important there's a super huge difference between intelligence and education mm-hmm. yeah just because oh, you're a college grad doesn't mean shit yeah, yeah. I don't you know could, there, shit. There, yeah there I know examples of that who, who go to college <laughs> I watched a really good TED talk on this actually there was a the one of the uh, top MMA fighters in uh, that comes from America right now uh, was he did really bad in school he realized that he didn't he couldn't learn the way that mm-hmm. that most kids learn and he got picked on for it a lot and then he realized how he learned, and the way he learned was he was much more like a kinetic person. He learned through like doing things and mm-hmm. kind of like having things happen to him. Like uh, it was the first time he got 
or not the first time, but one of the times he was getting picked on as a kid, and he realized that if he just moved out of the way, and kind of like made it look like he was ta- like he was getting hurt, but he was moving to where his body wasn't actually being harmed. Move, yeah. He was just looking like he was getting hurt, and from that he learned how to do that. And then he took that and he went into he karate to fight and like martial that, yeah. arts, and he learned how to fight like that. Anything that someone would do to him, eventually he would create a an image in his mind, and then he would be able to repeat that. Not by someone showing him, but by someone actually doing it to but, him. Yeah. And uh, from that, he learned that that's how he learned. And he, be- he he started learning, like, all the things he needed to know from that. And it's just like, um, that's that's the thing. No, Everyone learns differently. And if you can unlock the way that you learn, then you can actually be successful that's, at what you want to do. I try to tell people when they tell me that they're... Like, cause I people actually will say to you that they're stupid. Yeah, well, they're, it's because they're because they feel will tell stupid. Them that and they'll give yeah. up. They like they feel stupid, but I'm like, cause I learned and I, I, for the life of me, I don't know why it took all the way until freshman year of college to learn. Like, there's there are tests out there to teach to tell you how you learn a lot better. Like, give you a better way of give studying. give you a, a push in the right direction. Yeah. And, like, I learned that I, I learn when I hear something and repeat it. So, like, if I'm actually studying for something, mm-hmm. I look like a jackass. <laughs> because I'm, like, I'm reading something out loud while listening to something else. Mm-hmm. And I'm distracting myself. And then you're like, how come you can repeat that back to me? It didn't look like you were paying attention. But I'm just like, because that's how I learn. But... Other people probably don't learn that way. Like there are yeah, tons exactly. of other people there's that no won't way, learn that there's way. There's no way to streamline the way that. But I mean, as far as I know, it's it's a I weird mean, subject because it's it. I guess you could. That's do the outside whole, like, the realm of being able to control that in a specific way because there's no like the common way that people learn is auditory and visual. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the most common one, yeah. so that's the one they try to you know adhere and, to. But I guess what I'm trying to say is take that and then try to m- mold the way that you learn in a way that you can receive that if you want to try and learn the conventional way. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. That's the like, thing. That's, I, I wish, know that I know that in America, we're, we're put onto a path of going to elementary to school, middle school. Uh, Do it. We're not as bad as some other countries, that's but true. we're put on a path where we have to go through standard schooling. And it is good because schooling is important. I mean, you meet people through that. You learn social skills and all that. But... I feel bad that there's people that think that they can't do some do something or that they're bad at something just because they can't learn that way. Everything. If anything from this conversation get that you can that you can do. There's anything. always hope yeah. that you can do something like that. You can do what you want to do. I mean, like you just have to figure out what your what your thing is. Some people find it easier than others. I'm still trying to figure out the way that I learn because I'm desperately, I desperately have a hard time in college like i i am constantly not sure what i want to do uh i'm constantly getting into classes some i'll do really well in while others i'll just completely not have interest or i'll just it'll fall off i won't want to go to class anymore and i won't i'm very good at pretending to be a genius (laughs) like i'm working on that i have no idea i have no idea what's going on half the time anywhere but I can, but like in college, I walked into a class, I swear to God, I was drunk for, for an entire semester. <laughs> but while I was drunk, I had to focus. And while, when I had to focus, I could figure out what was going on. Which, it's like, you see those kids, you see those people who are like, you're like, why are they high in, cl- in class? Maybe that's how they learn. Maybe there's, maybe, maybe something's going on in their mind while they're high that like, everything's being absorbed oh yeah like i can i can actually focus better when i'm high like it just it affects everyone differently exactly yeah. mm-hmm. but like that's what that's what i'm saying because like there there were tons of semesters where i wasn't drunk at all in class and i drew stick figures <laughs> and and that actually was a way for me to focus because because if you went back and if you went back and, and looked at my notebooks, you would see stick figures fighting. <laughs> there, there were there were like gigantic wars of stick figures. Oh yeah, it's like just in, in a couple of my classes. And part of that is probably because <laughs> honestly when we're aging. when we're inebriated, things become a bit more interesting. Like That's mundane true, things become a bit more interesting yeah. than when we're sober. I can see that. I mean, 
And for then, a while, Randy, I was doing the same thing in my classes. I got this little notebook so I could. It was mainly for notes, but I, I found myself constantly sketching it. Oh, sweet! I have a five. I have a, like five subject yeah, notebooks notes, where so there are stuff in there. no notes. I have no notes. But if you looked at my GPA, you would be like, he knows exactly what's going on, and I did. But I never took notes because I was drawing stick figures. Yeah. And, or or I or I was like writing. I had a whole semester where my thing was who saves the hero. <laughs> I still don't know the answer to the question. Like that's probably if 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 someone was to to classify like what the the characters that I write and and like the stories what the deepest meaning of them of them are. Yeah. It would be who saves the hero. It, it definitely is, because I have no idea That's cool. when the hero gets in trouble, <laughs> like, who, oh, who saves day. the hero? Is it the people? Is it another hero? And in which case, who saves that hero? Is it an, is it, is it an endless, like... Cycle. Cycle. Or is, it, or is it just that, like, checks and balances? Where, you know, there's always got to be a hero saving someone. Yeah, saving a hero. You were, you were getting ready to say something uh, throughout that. I'm curious what oh, your right. interjection was going to be. Uh, this is going back a, a smidge, but you mentioned uh, pretending to be a genius and like going into classes and just sort of winging it. And I feel like human ingenuity at its finest is just winging it. Um, yeah, please. it's when you're, oh, when yeah. you're taking... What is... I'm, I'm trying what? to think, like, I'm trying to think of the quote. It's like... It's not tragedy, but it's a word like tragedy, like tra or like uh, trajectory, conflict or something. <laughs> One of those two is the mother of invention, as in like, you know. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I know what you're talking about. I've heard the quote before. But um. Yeah, no, I know exactly. It's it's because people are always. I think people look up to people who they see as their superior, and they're like, "Wow, those guys really know what they're talking about." And it's like some probably do. But at the same that, time, a lot of people are just winging it. I feel like, as humans, we do our best when we're just winging it. A good example I like, everything I, is, for me is related to Lord of the Rings because I just finished reading it. Uh, That's cool. Thing. So Gandalf, for those who don't know, is because it's not really explained in the movie, or really even in the book, you have to kind of read the Cimmerillion or get into the lore. He's, a, he's, a, he's like the incarnate of a god. He's a god incarnation. So... This is a man who is a spirit of some sort, a, a transcendental being That's cool. I love in human so. form, come down, and it's funny, at the very beginning of Lord of the Rings, so he comes and he explains to Frodo, like, this is the one ring, it's bad, it's the worst thing, we gotta do, we gotta get away with it, and Frodo's like, well, what do we do, Gandalf? And he's just like, I don't have the answers. So even this god being <laughs> doesn't know what he's doing, he's just winging it. Like, I feel like that's... That's funny. There was... Because all of our best inventions as a species and our best advancements have been during wartime. Yeah, yeah. Ne I mean, that's yeah. it. Necessity, necessity is the that's modern it, invention. That's it. That's uh, it. A lot of yeah. A lot of our you know greatest things that we have have happened by accident. Like you know, um, wasn't on purpose. I mean, I know. Like I'd say most of the stuff that I do too is serendipity. It, it's all. Um. It's, I don't know. It's it's none of it's planned. It's all like. Um, I can't think of the word. But, I mean, you go. You guys know what I mean, though, right? Yeah. 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 Like, it is cool. It's another one you can go there is desperation. Out of desperation mm -hmm. comes success. That's as us well. as a species. We survive. We persist. That we go on. Literally, all we do. That's all. That's <laughs> what. That's what we've been evolved. I mean, it looks like it looks like we do so much, but we really just survive. Trying to survive. And we're endurant. That's uh. That's how our ancestors hunted. We, we everything else in the whole world was faster than us. But we were better at running more distance. So the gazelle would run faster, and then we'd catch up. And then it would run faster, and then we'd catch up. And then it would run faster, and then we'd catch up. And then it was too tired to run, and then we'd beat its head in with a rock and eat. <laughs> and that is human. That is, that is humanity at its finest. We endure. We endure. The quintessential human moment. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I was going to say that. You're saying just kind of winging it. It was a in our uh, final critique for my drawing class, three drawing class. Everyone had to do their self portrait. One girl did hers on a on a piece of wood, and she like wood burned her That's portrait impressive. into it. It was it was 
All right, think of Bob Bur- Bob's Burgers style. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, That's no. what it looked like. I love it, but and, I hate uh, it. I wish you would take a picture of it because it just said, "Just go with it," <laughs> in the most absurd way possible. It reminded me of something that would be on a T-shirt, like one of those really corny T-shirts. That's kind of cool though. But it reminded me of that, mm-hmm. and it's just funny how things like that. What everyone thinks. It also it. looked like that girl. Have you ever seen that vine of that girl that's like going like this, and she turns around? Yeah. She's got the glasses on. Yeah, it looked like that girl. Uh, funny enough, here's the weird thing about art too. Like it was, it was obviously. I don't want to say this because who knows who could listen to this. It was good in its own vein of art. It was good in that like style of art. I don't know if that's what she was going for. If it was, then kudos. But everyone loved it. Oh yeah. That's the funny thing about the kind of art. You know what's interesting? It's, it's funny like, that you say that because me I woke art. up. I woke up ridiculously early this morning because I had to get up for like work at 4.30 and I woke up at like 3.30 right and I couldn't go back to sleep so I turned on I turned my TV on and Doug was on like like you know I remember Doug 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 is the Seinfeld of cartoons it pretty much is but like what was ever happening it was it was the nothing Absolutely, like Doug was just getting in the sheet. <laughs> Patty, man. Yeah, it's also but, the cartoon style is also dry, like yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like that. It was comparison. the it was. The, have you ever seen the episode? <laughs> have you ever seen the episode where, um, like Doug's taking an art class, and they're they're like suppose he there's a, his art teacher is gonna like put a couple up. In, on display or something like that mm-hmm. and he has a painting that he was working on and it was like a really it was a really nice like landscape painting and everything but on the back his dog got into some paint and then got into a fight with a raccoon <laughs> I do remember this episode now. and like you know kind of makes a mess all over the back of the mm-hmm. canvas so and that's the one that they that's decided. the one that they yeah, see yeah. and they're like this is great art and everything yeah. and but on the back is this like really great landscape but if he turned it over they'd be like well that's just it's just a landscape that's yeah, everyone can do Every, that. yeah yeah that's, that's just technique and, and then like he's at he's at the gumption. he's at the you know sh- viewing of his you know great art that he didn't do and they're like they're like paint us something and he takes a paintbrush and he dabs it in some paint and he makes like a squiggly line. And everyone's just like, this is the greatest art I've seen in, you know, 15 years or something. And you're just, you're just like, but that's just a line. That's just, he's uh, even, he's even there like, why do you people like this so much? That, bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, bless you. As, as an art student myself now, uh. It's funny, but I can see both sides of that. Yeah, no, I can see both sides of it too. It's ridiculous, though. It still is just as ridiculous. Because, but... like, I understand. I, I understand that you know there there are concepts that everybody different sees differently yeah. in art, but but at the same time, I'm yeah, I'm still just, just like <laughs> it's literally he took the paintbrush and he like you know well, it's like, well, vibrated a little do you guys know who Jackson Pollock is yeah the, have you yeah. guys seen Ex Machina mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's like that The when they're they're talking about the painting there and um, he, he's like uh, Pollock went in you know com- completely cleared his mind of any thought or whatever and just let you know his hand go wherever yeah. the paintbrush went if if he reversed it, if he thought about every little detail and you know what he wanted to do, he never would have made a single mark on the canvas. Mm. Yeah. So, and I think that's important to note too. It's a different thing to take away from that that story, but it's it's still important. Is that you never know what your audience is going to like. Art is completely subjective. So Doug might have thought that they prefer the landscape, but they ended up liking the the abstract thing yeah. on the back. And I feel like that's important for artists to know because you shouldn't be trying to pander to a demographic or an audience. Yeah, you should no. be doing whatever is your creative thoughts, whatever yeah, your whatever ideas. Whatever speaks to you is... is the, that's what you, that that's sounds- what you do. And then if you get lucky, then you get lucky. But art should be for you and not for an audience. Well, like it's it's interesting because... That's the, that's the conflict that's going on right now with that... Art. That's because we live in such a capitalistic yeah. society yeah. that nothing <laughs> you have to has make value money. unless it has value. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's interesting because, like, 
my entire life, I've never been able to draw. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. I just <laughs> I suck at it. But for the last like year, I've been like slowly teaching myself to draw, just kind of you know screwing around, trying to figure mm-hmm. stuff out. And it's like every time that it doesn't matter. I know I can do it. But every time that I stop to think about it, it's just the, the girl out. that I was drawing turns into like some kind of weird deformed blob. <laughs> like you know, that yeah. can be a good thing too, though. I mean, like, yeah. sometimes I've, style. I've, yeah. I've accidentally drawn some monsters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which has of- worked out because you know I was trying to figure out like a villain for for something, and and. You know, I got this. I can like, give you a prime toothpaste. example right now that we just experienced of that kind of like not caring or doing art for your own pleasure. That bison that I drew, I just yeah. drew that because I saw a bison. And I was like, I'm gonna draw a bison. I didn't think about it too much. I just was kind of enjoying myself. Yeah, exactly. And it may not have been the. And it's obviously not the greatest thing ever. But for some reason, there was just something infused it's a, with that because everyone's seen a cartoon before. Yeah. Everyone's seen a bison before. But it's just like, for some reason, that was very alluring because it was done out of just pure enjoyment. And I think people can kind of feel that and I, kind of sense that through even just the way something looks. I so highly weird. doubt that Walt Disney, when he was drawing Mickey Mouse, was, like, focused. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, no, 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 because, no. because Mickey Mouse is too good. Like, like just, just all in all of his entirety, I don't think that you could come up with... With something that would endure, you know, a hundred years, yeah, being focused. Yeah, I don't think anybody ever makes masterpieces on purpose. Like they're not like, oh, this is gonna be a masterpiece. Like yeah. no one ever thinks that. No one ever thought that, and that's happened. Maybe I'm sure more, that I'm sure, sure that happens if you're like uh, established already, and you're I like, think yeah, Vinci, like, I know what this will do to people. Yeah, but as like a, a newcomer, even if you know what people like, you're still not making something. You're like this. Everyone's gonna like this. I yeah, think I, I think Mona Lisa might be the the exception there. I th- I I would I would argue. No, that do you know what's funny though? I don't. I would argue different because uh, that was that was something that supposedly uh, Leonardo da Vinci did out of enjoyment. He was or out of like. He compassion. probably had a crush on her. Yeah. He was probably like, I'm going to try and get in her pants. <laughs> like, Maybe. Or the. Oh my no. It, it is widely. It's not widely accepted, but it is. It's like it's a theory that that Mona Lisa is Leonardo da Vinci himself. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, that could be. Yeah, That's awesome. Um, Wouldn't but, that be? I mean, uh, it's yeah, They've said that he he was a Danish girl interested in stuff like that, based just solely on human curiosity. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, you guys are right. Like even like music and stuff. Some of the best songs ever written. Like they they talk to the artists and they're like we just we didn't even plan it what? we went into the studio it just it just came you know to what, us you yeah. know what like, was yeah. what's interesting because you said music what's what song it's a '90s song that's just like it's infectious I think it's Jump Around <laughs> <laughs> did you ever hear the story about how it's, how it was written like most of it was written on the back like like in a driveway on the back of like a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> Like they they were just fooling around, yeah. and then you know it's it's an if it's an infectious song from the '90s where you're just like, you know, get up. Get even up, if you don't, even down. if you don't like the kind of music, you know the song. Yeah, it is interesting. That's it's uh, it's I think a property of humans is we're just empathetic and we can kind of feel that kind of emotion put into something. Or I don't know. Well, that's In the nice opinion. thing too is what you this intend. Is how it for people to take away or what you take away from your art isn't what other people take that's the best thing about art is when mm-hmm. you can, it's interpretive like yeah I, th- I think if you have one dimensional art it's still art but it's not as interesting like, even if it's perfect technically it's not as interesting as like that's why fundamentally I, false like unfounded art that has so many things you can take away from it that's like I, I think uh, a lot of movie critics prefer movies that you can watch multiple times and take away new stuff yeah, each time mm-hmm, yeah. and that's what that is yeah that's why, like, a lot... You'll see so much, like, amazing... Like, even on Facebook, you'll see people share, like, this, like, ridiculously good art. And you'll be like, how's this person not well-known? I mean, a lot of that... Sometimes there will be people that are really passionate and they just haven't been discovered yet. But a lot of it's just people that have really good technique. And, I mean, if you go and look at where some of those come from, it's just a lot of material that they've created. And sometimes it's just material they created because it was their job. Like, technique isn't everything. In art, it is by far not everything. Yeah, technique and creativity are two learn. sides of the same coin. Yep, yep. So. 
I've always thought that, like, you know, uh, visible mistakes in your art have always oh made gosh. it better. I learned that like, in figure drawing. I took so much from this figure drawing class. I, I can't. If I could recommend this teacher to anyone in W, Patrick, uh, oh, crap, Patrick, uh, <laughs> oh, man, what the heck, what's his last name? What a good endorsement. I know who you're talking about. I can't, I can't. Patrick Jones. Patrick Jones. Uh, um, the most take easy him. Easy if he is teaching anything, name. take him. Uh, yeah. because he's an example. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I couldn't think of that. It's because I always just call him Pat or Patrick. Uh, if you can take a teacher to you and you want to learn some, like, stuff like James is talking about here with, like, just showing, like, mistakes, not being, uh, so... Don't being a perfectionist well, and just all this stuff and yeah. not worrying too much about technique, but just letting your brush do it well, see, or your pencil. I think Pick him, please. He's such a good teacher. I think people in general well, I know I know I do. Be proud like, of what you do like, and don't worry about imperfections mistakes. are perfections. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more because, fun. Yeah. Because people in general are aware that there's no such thing as perfect. Yeah. That just, I'm sorry, they, that just reminds, saying that exact thing reminds me of that song, uh, John Legend's song. Oh, you're perfect in perfection. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I would, I would, I can relate more. To yeah, that's what it is. I think imperfections. And that's, when you're a true master of your craft, too, you, the imperfections you put in are on purpose. And I think that's really interesting because people who know what to look for recognize like this is on purpose and they can appreciate that and then people even if you don't know what to look for you can at least relate to it Mm -hmm. it's it's also you know i find it interesting that it's hard for me to write imperfections i can't that's how i know i'm not a good writer yet is because i can't do that because i'm i'm there writing and i'm like well like i was saying before i write i write characters that that i know can beat superman and that's because like that's what I that's what I that's the powers that I want them to have but I'm there trying to write their imperfections and you know I'm working on one where like the girl is she's just super depressed and for the life of me I can't remember how to write depression like (laughs) I don't know that's true for me as well I have a hard time writing like what do you mean you're not a good writer (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm not, I'm not going to win any awards, that's for sure. I, I have a lot of room for improvement. But uh, when I write, what I write is dependent on my mood. So, like, um, if I have to have be in a certain mood to write my novel. Uh, novel yeah, because it'd be hard for you to keep the same perspective. Yeah, and it's hard to... I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like a neutral. That way you can, like... Because when you write, you... You act. You're an actor. You go into character for the character, and you think how that character would. And that's how you write them. So if you're like mad, you're gonna write everyone mad. If you're sad, everyone's gonna be sad. If you're happy, everyone's gonna be happy. So when I'm like neutral and just you know chill and whatever for my day, that's when I write my novel. And then otherwise, I'll write like a short story. And then what the short story is is based on my mood. So like you can see if I write a scary story, that usually means that I'm in like a dark way of thinking not necessarily depressed but like I'm just thinking of more darker things yeah. if the story has like a creepy tone or, or like a, a sad tone I'm probably sad if it has like an existential tone I'm in like a state of thinking about life so like the last one we heard mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I was I was writing a character not too too long ago and I'm still I'm still writing him. It's just I've taken a break from from the story in and of itself. But like, like he's a genius. Mm-hmm. Just, that's hard to write too. Yeah, it's it it's, is because it's you hard have to write get, a character that's smarter than yourself. Yeah, you have to get you have to get smarter to keep up, and you have to learn things, which is really cool because like you learn a lot of stuff. I've that never you, thought about it that way. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But but like I was like, well, he's a genius, and he's you know, kind of an awesome athlete. He's got to have a flaw. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, clearly he's not going to be good with girls. Cause you know, most guys in general aren't good with girls. Mm -hmm. And especially at his age, cause he, cause I was writing him at like 21. I don't know many 21 year olds that are super good with girls. I don't know many 21, 21 year olds that are, you know, outside of like, let's go get a 30 pack and, (laughs) and play beer pong. But I finally got to it. I was like, 
I think his flaw will be that he can't cook for anything. <laughs> Like a super just genius cook. who just can't yeah. figure yeah, out turning recipe. on the oven, you know. But but at, while I'm there, I'm like, is that big enough? Is that a big enough flaw? Like he's he's out there. You can make it one. Yeah, it like I could, because it kind of makes it comedic. Mm-hmm. In the interest of time, um, I want to ask you guys first of all, uh, well, you, Randy. Uh, if you could explain a little bit of your comic to us, just kind of give us a very short oh, yeah. what, summary. Just everything you have worked on, are working on, and then what you want to work on, mm-hmm. and then kind of like your backs, like what do you do? Yeah, because we're kind of we're getting to the wrap up point, and I want well, to make okay. sure we get this in. I I'm working on two and a one shot. The 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 one shot's really interesting because it's it's uh. It's about a girl who has lost she she's just kind of lost her way in life in general and I don't know you've probably never read it but James or Zach you probably have maybe have you ever read like Iron Fist doesn't sound familiar Mm-mm. well Iron Fist is like I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Iron Iron Fist is this like kung fu master who punched a dragon in the face and got superpowers. And like <laughs> and there there are in in certain adaptations there are these ninja type guys who are chasing and just trying to like kick the crap out of him. Well, it's kind of like taking Iron Fist and making him a girl and giving him different powers and like like there are people after her because she can do stuff but she hates the fact that she can do stuff so it's like I've been working that through and then I've been working through one that deals in in a multiverse reality which multiverses are fun multi <laughs> oh this this one it's it's a lot of fun I'm playing around with dinosaurs <laughs> and you know I, I I dabble into the the kid in me nice, nice. well That's I'm cool. a child in general but so so <laughs> it's just kind of like I let it flow mm-hmm. and then the other one that I'm working on that I'm trying to get James in on like legitimately I'm just calling it social justice and it's about a social justice warrior oh with it's so perfect with this time period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm I'm pulling from from this time period and and from a little bit of my own inner conspiracy nut <laughs> to like make make a make a girl who can just I I like really tough women. Like there there's I saw online and it's a it's it actually happened. It's it's from Cowboy Bebop. Spike is oh, Spike is saying something about uh about he loves women who can kick his ass. <laughs> and I was and I looked at that and I was like, that's exactly yeah. <laughs> pretty much. She's pretty badass. <laughs> like like she she's just a social justice warrior who has no idea how to be a hero. Like like I don't I don't know if I ever want her to get an idea of how to be a hero. Because I think that's cool. I think that makes that that makes her human. Well, she is human. <laughs> like I know what you mean. She though. she has she I'm going I'm trying to write her to have more problems than than solutions. No matter what's going on. Mm. Which it'll get it, if I can if I can like Smooth it out. It'll get really, really interesting really, really fast. Cool. All right, awesome. Well, Randy, thank you for being on the show with us today. Uh, we look forward to having you back. It's been a really, really interesting topics we've had come up here. <laughs> you want to do like some shout out? You want to do, uh, do like Instagram or Twitter or anything you want to? Oh, yeah. Let's shout go out. ahead and shout that out if you've got that. Like something we could follow you on. off the top of your head. Just, just my Instagram. It's, it's no kings underscore pro. Okay. Which right. is which is also in the near future going to be the name of my production company nice. when I get that up and going. Awesome. Because well, I want to make I want to make like movies. 
Yeah. Comic books, movies, yeah. you know, short stories. Let's let's write it all. Do it all. We have a piece. T- me, Randy, and Justin have a piece tea commercial out there. If you oh, look yeah. up, can piece- we do that again? <laughs> <laughs> look up the piece sequel. Tea. What is it? Are we the first or second oh, on YouTube? Oh, uh, we're the first now. If you look, I up, was, just look up I piece think. tea. What is it? Just piece tea. Piece tea commercial. Piece, piece tea, tea commercial, commercial on YouTube, and you'll it's find. It's got a uh, big corny like uh, that was title so on good. the front of it with two people holding up a can of piece tea. Speaking of which, I, I, I know I told I know I told one of you about this a long time ago. I, I actually have been writing like like a piece man oh, yeah, movie <laughs> that I, I want I want to do like he's he gets powers that are just crap they're no good <laughs> they're they're like like his power the one power that I came up with was like he's held he's held on to these two sticks for so for like all of his training so they can't break like, <laughs> I, they're he doesn't have any like super really, strength. Really mundane power. He doesn't have any super strength, so like he's just hitting things and they're not doing it. Like, he's really know. good at filling out his taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and like the other one is just that like he confuses you by what you see. So it's like 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 you're about he if he wants you're about to punch your grandmother. So it's like oh god I can't punch it. But how does that help him <laughs> if they hate their grandmother and it's like wham, <laughs> ow. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That would be an interesting endeavor to take on. All right. Well, we will be back uh, soon with another podcast. We'll see you guys later. Same bad time, same bad place. Yep. <laughs> yep. Thanks for listening, anybody who listened. It's been a fun cast. <laughs> see ya. Make sure to like and subscribe because we're on YouTube now. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. <laughs> SoundCloud can't handle our capacity, yeah. our mass. Can't Are we on YouTube? No. Yep, Do we, we have a uh, YouTube channel. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> See, even our podcast is surprising. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye. Peace. Cow.